Thank you everyone for joining us today. We have Wendy McNamara, who is current state representative running for re-election. Uh, joining us in the conversation is Tara Barney, the president and CEO of the Southwest Indiana Chamber, and John Briscoe, who is, serves as one of our government affairs committee members. So turning the conversation over to Tara, thank you. Well, Wendy, thanks for giving us a little time today. Thanks for uh, your service to this region and for standing up for re-election again. Uh, I'm going to lead off with a question that won't surprise you. Um, mm -hmm. Our community is close to a federal record of decision on the uh, environmental impact statement for the I-69 river crossing. It seems to be stalled over the decision on the fate of the toll-free preservation of the two bridges that currently are uh, connecting us to Henderson. Tell us how you might help us to support uh, the I-69 bridge project and how you think you can um, be helpful to our community's desired plan to keep both of these bridges intact because they're so important to serving our business community and our workforce that lives and works on both sides of the river. Well, the uh, toll-free option for the other bridge is obviously is one that the locals want um, to have as an alternative because they use it every day and it becomes accustomed to it. Um, the alternative route of the new I-69 would probably take some people out of their way who are used to using the other bridge. Uh, and we understand that one will be told and I think everyone's very, yeah, has accepted and, that. And, yeah. and human nature would say the person who knows how to get there would want to go onto the uh, no toll bridge to, to get back and forth to work. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is, is those bridges are expensive to uh, maintain, they're expensive to uh, upkeep every year you have um, some sort of general maintenance taking place on them yeah. uh, and if they are to main uh, toll free uh, you're going to have a challenge there and having a conversation of education with people in general in the community um, and I know it's their desire for them to remain toll free for that specific purpose because they're going to be using it back and forth um, for work. I'm sure there would have to be some uh, designation, obviously, for truck traffic to go the other way on the tolled routes versus the, the, the free routes or for local traffic only, if that's the word that you want to use. Um, but I think it all starts with education and getting community buy-in. I don't believe that um, anyone is opposed necessarily to I-69 having a minimal toll uh, on the new route, uh, but I do see the concerns of folks who currently use the bridge that is there and, and want to continue to do so. I do know that discussions have been uh, to take the twin bridges down to one bridge to lessen the maintenance um, cost per year, and that would always be an option. But uh, when it comes down to it, I think it's going to be mainly about communication and education to the community and, and really uh, finding the dollars there if they wish it for it to remain toll free to uh, be able to keep it up. We appreciate your advocacy over all these years and look forward to uh, uh, getting this bridge built for our community and not just our region, but the country. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. John, I'll lob it to you for another question. Yeah, we're going to switch gears from I-69 to, uh, to the pandemic. Um, so question number two we have is, while it was hoped that the federal government uh, would address concerns about business liability uh, for those companies operating during the pandemic, it appears that this issue is going to fall to the individual states. Uh, many states have already started to take action. Uh, wanted to see your view, uh, specifically what activities, issues uh, should be covered, and do you plan to play a role in authoring or sponsoring legislation on the issue? Okay. Uh, I think the biggest concern from day one has been uh, individual liability of businesses, especially if, um, let's say, you have a COVID-positive employee and then let's say, for example, a, a customer might, might come down with some sort of uh, COVID symptoms after that. Uh, I know the discussion has been there uh, since day one about the liability concerns um, for business owners because I think they're everybody's concerns. I believe the um, history and precedent, if you look at other types of legal precedent, is in your favor as a business owner. Um, because, well, let's just say as a business owner, business owner who has done everything to mitigate 
uh, the effects of COVID. They've taken all the precautions as using the masks and making sure that they're, they're having masks and sanitizer and cleaning and, and everything like that. Uh, history and precedent is on your side um, in other arenas, arenas, and I wouldn't suspect that they uh, couldn't transfer over. Uh, I would say that I would expect legislation this upcoming session on um, some sort of protections for businesses and business owners uh, in certain circumstances like this so that it's not left to precedent so that we can actually have some conversations out there. I have talked with a few individuals who are interested in uh, pursuing those types of legislations. Uh, I think we'll see a lot from a lot of different angles, um, but more importantly, I think uh, history's on your side uh, when it comes to what we're dealing with right now, uh, but that doesn't mean necessarily that there won't be people out there trying to take advantage. Gotcha, what you're saying? Well, I'll kind of stay on that since the pandemic colors everything we're thinking about right now, mm -hmm. uh, because it certainly put a strain on both state and local budgets, as you well know, and uh, you're, you're about to go into a budget making session. I'm interested to know what you really want to be sure we're protecting and um, giving greater emphasis to and where you anticipate it might be logical to make some contractions to uh, connect, to address the uh, reduced budget that the state's going to have um, this year and in future years. So this is a softball question you're expecting us to ask you about the budget. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reality, unfortunately, is we're going to have decreased revenues across the board just for the mere fact that not as many people have gone out and shopped and mm -hmm. um, purchased things that they normally would or um, tourism probably is the biggest area that has taken the biggest hit in, in Indiana. Um, in my opinion, they uh, have tried every methodology, I think, to, to recoup their losses there. So um, as far as the upcoming budget, I don't see new monies going towards um, items that might be new projects. Uh, you would see some uh, maybe consistently funded programs being continued to be funded, but I wouldn't expect new monies to go those ways. Um, as far as early discussions, uh, a lot of has centered around education, uh, primarily uh, in continuing to provide um, resources at the schools for um, protective equipment uh, and those type of supplies because those don't generally fall into a natural school budget uh, that they're prepared for. A lot of um, technology as far as schools are concerned, um, helping them be able to bridge the gap um, on virtual learning. I do know the EVSC has 4,000 computers sitting on a boat waiting to come into a port uh, somewhere. So that, that's an important need and important discussion is uh, how do we make sure that our schools are able to operate under the circumstances that we're giving. And I would imagine uh, increase in the technology budget specifically for education. Uh, in areas like business and that sort of thing, I would expect maybe similar um, state grants like we've seen on the federal level to help weather the bad storms. Uh, I would suspect maybe the state would be able to, to do the similar type of granting programs, uh, small business loan protections and things like that. Um, but as far as uh, new money is going towards things, I, don't, I wouldn't suspect uh, you'll see those, but I would suspect you're going to see increases in in specific parts of other budgets that you haven't seen before. That's good. And I know you mentioned education. That takes us to our next question. So that's a good segue. Um, and, and as you know, Southwest Indiana must increase our overall education attainment uh, for citizens going forward to compete in this global economy that we're in. Uh, increased high school graduation rates uh, in post-secondary credentials um, are regional goals, as you know. Uh, if you could rewrite the education and workforce programs and processes, what changes would you make or what would you like to keep uh, to work towards this goal? Well, to be honest with you, I tried that in 2012. Um, I created what's called a career and technical education diploma pathway and, and people just weren't ready for that at that time. Um, but I will tell you the champions were down here in Southwest Indiana trying to help me push that. Um, and there's some parts of that that I still think are valuable for us as a state. For example, um, math 
Uh, algebra two is a math typically used for students going to college. I have long advocated that if I have a student that's not going to go, go into college, but it's going to go into a career, let's say welding or HVAC, uh, the math that they should be learning should be in the context of the career they're intending to do. So some sort of technical math replacing uh, whatever we would normally consider to be the advanced math um, that a lot of students are pushed into. Um, there has been changes as far as the graduation diploma, um, and that's what I initiated in 2012. It eventually came to fruition by 2018. Uh, it took a few years and a lot of negotiations to make that happen. Uh, finally, people are understanding the need for career and technical education as to be an equal with a four-year education degree without uh, minimizing the importance of actually going on to a four-year college. And that was a tricky balance. Uh, in the 1990s, we swung the pendulum so far, uh, saying that it was a four-year degree for all, that it really was at the expense of career and tech ed. Um, now we're trying to swing, swing the pendulum back, um, while at the same time balancing the need for both. Um, and the message being that a, a high school diploma isn't enough, but a technical certificate, or at least two years post high school, uh, is something that you're going to need, like an apprenticeship or internship or something like that to, to really lead yourself into the 21st century skills. Um, and, you know, I live this every day in, in my career is having our students uh, choose the career in the context of something that they love um, and be successful at it. And what needs to be done is to make it easier for them to be able to do that. Nicely communicated. That's, I think, good clarity that we are all trying to struggle through because we know that uh, there's so much bandwidth in this credential conversation and we just got to figure out how to start uh, quantifying that. Um, and so the question I want to be sure that we have time for is really about what you plan to champion. And, you know, we all can jump to conclusions knowing what you've championed in the past. But in fairness, I'd like to know what your, uh, what your priorities really are for this upcoming session without jumping to conclusions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the chair of courts and criminal code. And really since day one, I've been in the legislature, I've been more of the juvenile justice person mm -hmm. and have championed juvenile justice issues. Uh, for the past two years, I've been trying to get a study done of the juvenile justice system in Indiana so that we can stop doing juvenile justice by geography and uh, do it by more of what is in the best interests and needs of, of juveniles of the state of Indiana. So uh, starting next week after two years and a lot of conversations and a few grants here and there to get started, um, a full on study of the state of Indiana's ju juvenile justice system is gonna get started. Um, that will take about six months to drill down on 92 counties worth of juvenile justice and talking with a local uh, stakeholders on what our definitions of juvenile justice are in the communities and then eventually that'll come out in a report in which um, we'll be able to get a, a temperature for what our juvenile justice reform looks like here in the state of Indiana and then eventually uh, do what we can that's best um, for kids here so that they can flourish and kind of leading back to the education pieces um, you know if we can defer any kid from um, the criminal justice system and fix it with uh, something else, be it mental health or uh, processes or other wraparound services. Um, that saves us in the long run, long run as a state uh, from having to pay for that juvenile as an adult um, because of juvenile recidivism rates are pretty high um, when they don't receive those wraparound services. So that's my biggest champion this year is, is continuing to work on juvenile justice reform I will also um, be on the uh, uh, group that looks into a lot of the reforms we're talking about um, as far as the continued criminal justice reform that we've done for the past uh, six years or eight years or so um, and make sure that we are up to date on all the issues and how, how the current um, data is showing Indiana is doing since we created a new criminal code back in uh, 2016. Well, thank you. And thank you for taking a few minutes to communicate specifically on that, because I think that uh, 
we all know you on our issues and we oftentimes, um, and I know this about your leadership role, but I appreciate you explaining it clearly and, and sharing it with our constituents. And thanks so much for being with us and for serving this community for so long. Uh, we, we know it's an, a unique year to campaign, so we hope this little video <laughs> communication is, is another tool that helps you get the word out on your priorities. But thank you for serving us, Representative. Thank you so much.